3, without all the communion, turning on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins unto God our Father, beseech again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
meeting. I'm planning for this the second Sunday in Advent. Recorded for us in the 40th chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 to 11, starting with the, 11, the first verse. Comfort, comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Can't you walk to a high mountain, O Zion? Herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will lead his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom, and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. The epistle reading for us this morning, or for us the third chapter of 2 Peter, verses 8 to 14, starting with the 8th verse. But well, do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn? What? According to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Let us stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. 
chapter, verses 1 to 8.
to you from our living Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for today's invitation comes to us from the Gospel lesson. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. This is the gospel of the Lord. So these words penned by St. Mark, the blessed evangelist, on the inspirational spirit, you find a theme for this fornication is the voice. His voice. God's voice. As God's voice goes into the world, it always begins with God the Father. Then goes through his living voice and word of Son, carried forth into the world by God's breath and wind, the Ruah of the Holy Spirit. And his voice, and his words, can do things that no other voice and words on the planet can do. In the heart, create the seeds of saving faith. Forgive sins, feed faith. So in the beginning, the Father spoke the living voice and word of Son, carried forth by the breath of God, the wind of God, the Holy Spirit. And all the heavens, and all the earth, and all that exists in the heavens, and all that exists in the earth were created ex nihilo, out of nothing, all by his power all by his voice, all by his words. This brings us to the Old Testament lesson for today. The Old Testament lesson for today, we find the voice of the word of God now being spoken through the prophet Isaiah. The Old Testament lesson for today, the prophet Isaiah, he tells us that before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, before the promised Messiah, there will be another one. A messenger, a voice crying in the wilderness, prepare and make straight the way for the Lord. We know that that one was St. John the Baptist, who did his work out in the wilderness by the waters of the Jordan River. His job as the Baptist was to change and transform and turn the hearts and minds of God's faithful people, the Jews, who believed in the promise that one day God would send a Savior who would save them from their sins. So as John the Baptist did his work out by the waters of River Jordan, St. Mark the Evangelist tells us, and he went forth proclaiming repentance and a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. The law and the gospel. First, the law. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. See your sins. Recognize your sins. Have sorrow for your sins. And confess your sins. And know that as you confess your sins, what you are doing is you are giving all of your sins and all the sins committed against you to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, so that he can take them and put them on his back and go to the cross, so when he dies, they all die with him. So we can turn and say to you, your sin is no more. You are forgiven. So St. John the Baptist then proclaimed the gospel. And this is the gospel. That Jesus lived a perfect life, died upon the cross, and rose again the third day, so we can have forgiveness and life and salvation. Come on down into the waters of the Jordan River and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And know that when you partake of forgiveness of sins, you are purely cleansed and washed and purified of all of your sins and all the sins committed against you. Know that when you partake of forgiveness of sins, you die in the death of Christ, are resurrected in the resurrection of Christ, and you are changed and transformed in body, spirit, mind, and soul, totally, completely, and holy, so you're no longer conform to the pattern of the fallen world, but 
knowing the words of St. Paul the Apostle in Romans 12, 1. And know that when you partake of forgiveness of sins, because all of your sins are removed from you, as far as the east is from the west, and no more, that you are reconciled. Now at peace. At peace with God. At peace with yourself. At peace with your neighbor. And probably know that as you partake of forgiveness of sins, you are fully restored as a child of the Heavenly Father. All by His power. All by His voice. All by His words. And so, in this way, the Jews who came out to see St. John the Baptist in the wilderness by the waters of the Jordan River, in this way they were transformed, and they were changed, and they were turned. In this way the road was made straight for them, so now they could receive Jesus as their Lord, their Savior, and their King of Kings, and Lord of Lords. All by God's power, all by His voice, all by His words. Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me and our baptism. Our baptism is the baptism of Jesus, and his baptism is ours. In the Gospel lesson for today, John the Baptist tells us that there is one who comes behind him who is mightier than he is. He only baptizes with water, but the one who comes behind him will baptize with the Holy Spirit, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when you and I were baptized, the baptism of water was poured upon us, and we heard the voice and the words of our God. The Heavenly Father speaking to the living voice of the Word of Son, but the power of the Holy Spirit. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So you and I can be changed, and you and I can be transformed. So we could connect with Jesus the Shepherd, and he could connect with us. So the divine exchanges could take place, and he could take our bad and give to us his good. He took the bad of our belief and gave to you and me the gift of saving faith. And him is Lord and Savior and Redeemer. He took the bad of all of our sins and all the sins committed against us, and he gave to us forgiveness of sins. They all died with him when he died upon the cross and good Friday. He took the bad of our old Adam and gave to us a new man, the desire to want to live a God-pleasing life, to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and mind, and love our neighbor as ourselves. He took upon himself the bad of our eternal condemnation and gave to us the good of eternal salvation. And as the Good Shepherd is giving to you and me all these awesome gifts and blessings and benefits, according to the words and promises of God, he gave to you and me one more. The ability to recognize his voice and his words above and beyond all others. You and I are the baptized and faithful. You and I are now the sheep of Jesus as our good shepherd. And for you and me who are the sheep, for you and I who are the baptized and the faithful, Jesus the good shepherd and only Jesus, the Good Shepherd, will do. Only His voice will do. Only His words will do. Not almost Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Not almost His voice. Not almost His words. That will not cut it for you. And that will not cut it for me. Only our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. His voice and His words will do. We realize as we live in a fallen, broken world, there's lots of voices and words screaming into our ears each day. From friends and relatives and family, from co-workers and fellow classmates and students, through all sorts of ways, through the television, through the radio, through the computer, through the internet, through social media, through twittering and tweeting, and everything else in between. We realize that embedded and coded in some of those voice and words is one other voice and one other word 
But you and I got to be aware of the voice and word of the old and the fall. He is a serpent. He is a snake. He is a liar. He is a deceiver. He never tells the truth. And he's a snake. He is sneaky. He is cunning. He is crafty. He can use the very word of God. He can modulate his voice to sound really close to the voice of Jesus, the good shepherd. When he does that, you and I know that we are listening to the voice and the words of the old people because of this. Is that voice and word pushing us toward Christ crucified and resurrected or dragging us away? Is it encouraging you and me to keep the Ten Commandments, to love the Lord our God with heart, soul, and mind? Or is it tempting you and me to break one of the commandments and then justify it afterwards? Oh, you know, everybody else is doing it. It's okay. It's not really a sin. Oh, you know why I said that? Because they said that first. You know why I did that? Because they did that first. Too many times. The old UFO speaks and we listen. Too many times the old UFO leads and we follow. And each and every time we do, we find ourselves falling short. Going to a place we shouldn't go, thinking stuff we shouldn't think, saying things we shouldn't say, doing things we shouldn't do. Me and every one of you, we all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. And now we go back to his baptism. He too was baptized by St. John the Baptist in the waters of the River Jordan. And the scriptures tell us that he was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. One of the ways that all righteousness is fulfilled is that his baptism is ours and our baptism is his. When Jesus stepped into the waters of his baptism, he stepped in the waters of our baptism. So when we step in the waters of our baptism, we step in the water of his. We collided with him and connected with him. And he collided with us and connected to us. So that he could take upon himself all the bad. All the bad of me and every one of you. All the bad of our sins and the sins committed against us. All the bad of all the sins of all the people in all the world by all thought and word and deed. All the bad of the old evil foe, the snake, the serpent, with all of his lies and all of his deceit to his voice and his words. All the bad of the darkness of death and the power of the grave. When he was baptized, the heavens opened up and Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit, who descended upon him and anointed him in the form of a dove, and filled him with the Holy Spirit. So when he baptizes us in our baptism and gives to us the gift of faith, he can also fill us with the Holy Spirit. And now you and I are temples of the Holy Spirit. And the heavens open, and the Heavenly Father said, so there is no mistake so nobody ever gets it wrong. So nobody is ever confused. So everybody always gets it right in all time and place and spaces. This is my son with whom I am pleased. The one that I love. It was the waters of the baptism of Jesus that drove Jesus to the cross and the empty tomb. At the cross and the empty tomb, he conquered and defeated all the sin of all his righteousness. All of Satan with his love, and all of death in the power of the grave with resurrection and new life. For me and for you, because we are his sheep. So you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. But also, so the words of Isaiah the prophet of the Old Testament last for they can come true. Comfort, comfort, ye my people. Your warfare is ended against the enemies of sin and Satan and death. Your iniquity is pardoned. You have received double from the hand of the Lord. 
As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ suffered and died upon the cross, being fully God and fully man, giving up all his life and all his blood and all his body as the perfect and acceptable sacrifice. He paid double what the law demands. Double the redeeming price. Double the ransom price. That's got to be paid. So this is the voice in the words of Jesus just before he died upon the cross. Autolios. It is done. It is finished. Nothing else has to be said. Nothing else has to be done. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has done it all. Paying double with all of his life and all of his death and all of his resurrection. Affirm and confirm by the very voice and the word of our God. And now it comes down to you and now it comes down to me. And now our task is to make our pilgrimage to the wilderness of this life to the baptismal font of the promised land. And now you and I, we depend big time upon the promise of Jesus the Good Shepherd. I will never forsake you or forget you or abandon you. I am with you even until the end of the age. Shoulder to shoulder, elbow to elbow, hip to hip, kneecap to kneecap, and shin to shin. And for you and me, that is good because we depend upon it. As you and I go down the highway that's laid before us to go to the promised land, you and I will uh, encounter dark valley. You will know when you hit the dark valley, you will not have to be told. The dark valley you hit hits you when you are bummed out to the mass. When you lose things that are really big and really important. Things like good friends that have called home before you. Things like money, a job, land, status. When it happens, the Good Shepherd, who is with you, then promises to whisper to you, do not fear, do not be afraid, because I am here, and I am here for you, to attend to your need. And he does, by allowing you into his presence, by allowing you to hear his voice and his words, because it is through his power, and his voice, and his words, that he will lift up the valley with you in the bottom of the valley until it is a level plain. She can cross over from one side to the other and keep on cruising to the promised land. All by his power. All by his voice. All by his words. And as you and I travel the highway that's laid out before us, you and I are going to hit the crooked road. The hairpin turns and curves that pop up without warning and without notice. It happens to you and me as we have to deal with sickness and tragedy and catastrophe in our lives and the lives we know the best and love the best. So at that time, the Jesus Good Shepherd remains by your side and promises to whisper in your ear, do not fear, do not be afraid, because I am here for you, to help you in your time of need, by allowing you into his presence and hearing his voice and his words. And through his power and his voice and his words, straightening out the crooked road so you continue down the highway to the promised land. All by his power, his voice, and his words. As you and I go down the highway that's marked before us, have you ever noticed as a Christian that Sometimes it's like running a marathon. We run the good race. We fight the good fight. We get it done, and we got it done. We are tired. We are weak. We are weary. We are worn out. Our get up and go has got up and gone. There's nothing left. We are running on fumes. So we turn and we look, and there's this great big mountain right in the middle of our road. And this is your mountain. 
in the middle of your road. And the internet can't help you. Your friends can't help you. No one can help you. This is your road with your mountain, so you're going to have to deal with it. So there you are, bending over at the waist, hands on your hip, sucking air like a locomotive. And you look at the mountain, and you say to Jesus, Good Shepherd, no way, Lord. No, no way. Lord, I can't. There's no way I can make it over the top of that mountain. It is ginormous. The top goes into the clouds. The, the sides are shearing straight down. I'm tired, Lord. I'm weak. I'm weary. I got nothing. No way, Lord. No way. And that's when Jesus, your good shepherd, remains by your side. Promise that you do not fear. Do not be afraid. Because I am with you, and I am here to help you in your time of need. So he allows you in his presence to hear his voice and hear his words. So that through his power, his voice, and his words, the high mountains and hills are laid low. A level plain. You keep on going. Cruising to the promised land. The last thing is this. Sometimes as you and I go down the highway that's parked before us, sometimes there is the rough road. The rough road is, slow, is what slows us down. You and I who live here in the heartland in Ag America, we know all about the rough road. We know all about the washboard dirt roads of rural America where you've got to slow down to five miles an hour. Because if you don't go five miles an hour, you're going to rattle a body right out the frame of the vehicle that you're driving. A lot of things slow you and me down. Doubts, fears, worries, cares, trials, tribulations, and troubles. So do you good shepherd? remains by your side promises then to come to you and say, do not fear, do not be afraid, because I am with you, and I'm here to help you according to your need. He allows you in his presence to hear his voice and hear his words, so through his power and his voice and his words, he can level out the rough road so you can keep on cruising the promised land. All through his power, his voice, and his words. What a great loss of God you and I have. In his love and his grace and mercy, he has chosen to call you and me to be one of his sheep, and Jesus is our good shepherd. To be able to recognize his voice and his words above and beyond all others. Knowing that a lot of people put their faith and trust in a lot of things in the fallen world of the world that are passing away. The best place you and I can put our faith and trust is Jesus, our good shepherd, his voice, and his words. Today, tomorrow, and before all the time. In Jesus' name, amen. Now the peace of God has passed on human understanding, may it much faith and light everlasting. Amen. Let us stand and sing and agree.
them and their afflictions, and upon them be your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy, all honorable Creator, we praise you for blessing the earth to make it fruitful, bringing forth in abundance whatever is needed for the support of our lives. Cross we implore you in the work of ranch farmers, grant us appropriate weather of sunshine and moisture. May both have a seed time and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy, hear the prayer. In your hands, O Lord, we could all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, may your kingdom be just to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing for Thanksgiving hymn, verses 1, 2, and 3 of the 334 on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry.